do. Hello and uh, welcome again to another week talking about languages, language learning. Thank you so much for joining me and um, for keeping me company on today, Sunday. Uh, I enjoy my Sunday evenings with you very, very much. And I like your questions and getting to talk about languages, it's always something that's just super cool. It's one of the things why I think the languages, language get togethers are so, so much fun and why people go away feeling motivated, energized, and just want to go away learning more because um, you get to speak to like-minded people and you get to you sort of encourage each other and uh, yeah, it's just so much fun. Uh, so really, really good to be back. Um, hello, 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 welcome. Um, hello, what's up? Hey, Sam, psych, psych. Uh, to you too. Nice to see some Icelandic there. Um, so uh, today I've picked a topic that it was interesting for me actually because uh, we're getting close to the summer. Now I don't know how you are with your summer holidays and, and where you are in the world. It could even be winter holidays for you actually because obviously in the southern hemisphere it's not coming up to summer, it's coming up to winter. Um, or is already winter, possibly. Um, but here in the Balkans now, from typically from around about the 10th of June-ish, schools tend to stop working for the summer and kids go on their holidays. So typically here, this is thought of kind of the start of summertime. And the reason is, is it just gets too hot for children to be learning in school and studying. So they, they, they have the summer holidays. Now, Summer holidays in the UK when I was growing up were about six weeks long. Here they're a few months long. Uh, so there's a big difference. Um, what that's meant for me over many years is that actually I've had a summer period where I don't have the school run, I don't have certain things that I normally do during the year. So I started doing these language projects. And so I wanted to talk about language projects to see if that's a thing that people do. I want to see you know, if you do them and to, to sort of ask what, what they mean, if anything, to you. Um, so I asked that question and I, I put it on um, Instagram as a poll. So the poll that came back, actually, quite a few people answered this. Most of you said yes. So there was like 68% uh, of you said that, yeah, this was a thing that you do. Language projects is a known quantity. 15% um, of you said you don't. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. Here. There's no, no, no one, no one wins a prize. It's just simply to see what works for individuals. And then 17% of you said, because huh. so I put, huh, what, what's a language project as a third answer? Because I think it's a legitimately uh, fine thing to actually not know what that concept or idea is. And so I think probably that's a good place to start with. What what actually do I mean by a language project? So let's start there. So in my own circumstance, I studied languages at university, and then I've been working with languages for many, many years. So for me, a language project is something that I take on for a month to three months usually. Um, they're the short-term ones that I would do over, say, the winter break or the summer break. And I would study a particular language to get to know how it works, to maybe get to speak it a bit, um, to get under the skin really of the language and the people, its culture and all that kind of stuff. And I sometimes before COVID would even go and spend time in the country as well. So that's what I mean by a language project. And it doesn't mean that you need to get some sort of you know, really fluent or it doesn't have to be intensive. It doesn't have to be a really high level, but it's kind of a dip your toes into the language. And that's that's what it means to me as a language project. Now, there are other types of language projects that I take on. Sometimes they last for maybe a year. Sometimes they may be ongoing projects. So that would just be typically what you'd say as a normal language study, I guess. So for me, when COVID started, I did a few language projects with COVID happening because I didn't have the school run. So I got to do more language projects. I did the North Sami thing. I did Scots. I did all of these little language projects where our courses came up and I wanted to find, go through the courses, 
see what the information was, find out more about the languages, and just sort of broaden my knowledge of other people's other languages and just sort of yeah, widen, broaden my horizons, I guess. And I find this as a really important part of language learning for me. It doesn't mean that every single language has to be you know, something I study until I get a degree in it or, you know, or I, I, I get to a level where I can sit a C2 exam or a C1 exam, which I think sometimes seems very highly sought after, but I'm never 100% clear as to why. And the, the thing is that all knowledge builds on you as a person and it helps you to grow. And so even a bit of knowledge is better than no knowledge, right? Uh, to know about something, uh, you know, knowing knowing basic words and concepts and ideas just helps to add to your general knowledge of the world and your understanding of people. So if you meet somebody else from that country or you hear something similar, you can start to make connections. And, I, and for me, language learning is exactly that. It's making connections, uh, making connections uh, to other people, to cultures and to other countries. And this is what I really like to do. So I do that generally. I did it a lot during COVID. And then I have these longer term projects that I take on. So during COVID, I also took on um, Cornish, which was a project that I didn't know how long it would start. I, I usually just take it on as a, a year long project if I know it's going to be a, a longer course. And then I actually just took it year by year. So now I've just completed my second year of Cornish. I sat my uh, Cornish exam, in fact, for the second grade a level uh, yesterday. I sat the written, reading and listening parts yesterday. And on Tuesday, I will sit the, or I will take the oral exam. I will uh, speak in Cornish for, I, I, I'm not sure exactly how long the uh, the exam is. I think it's, we've got a half hour slot, so nothing particularly taxing. Uh, but it will be a, a good opportunity for me to consolidate all of the learning that I've done, to see where I've got to and to have a kind of a, a marker, I guess, on my journey. You know, like when you go you, you go up a mountain and you reach a certain camp, base camp, and then you go further up the mountain, right, and you stop at certain places. This, for me, is what the exam structure and course structure does. It gives me these very obvious places where I can uh, sort of put in a hook and say, that's where I got to, tie off the string, and then carry on climbing, to use the climbing metaphor. Um, and this for me is, is is something that will, will just be ongoing. I mean, certain languages, they will last for a year or maybe a little bit longer or they might just taper off. Um, you know, I just kind of dip my toes in when I can, but not take it as seriously. Other languages, I will carry on for a while longer. Cornish, I, at this moment in time, my plan is to start grade three and I will do another year of it. There is a grade four level that you can do. That normally takes two years and um, we'll see what happens after that. But that's way off in the future. And I'm not going to start thinking about too many things in the future until I've kind of got today done, if you know what I mean. For me, it's very important to to not sort of think too far ahead, because what I find that does is it gets me um, into a point where I feel I should be doing more or I want to rush or um, it makes me feel almost pressured or stressed and do you, do you ever have that feeling when you, you when you have something a goal in mind uh that you almost stress yourself and put yourself in a in a difficult position and then nothing happens because you, you're not in the right state of mind or in the right mindset should i say to to really just live in the moment and do what you're supposed to be doing for each small step on the way because it is really baby steps in language learning it's you know, it's very difficult to go like this really, really quickly. So this is what I do with my projects. And I find mini projects for a month or three months, just an excellent way to, to focus my brain and to say, do you know what, I'm going to do this for one month, I can promise myself a month, okay, a month isn't crazy. It's not a crazy amount of time. And if it works, and if I enjoy it, then maybe I can carry on. If I don't enjoy it, or it doesn't work, then maybe I can regroup, consider my options again, and move forward from there. So this is why I find doing these projects particularly useful personally. And this is what I mean by language learning projects. And many of you wrote to say, you know, 
you also do these kinds of things. Um, so Timothy wrote to say that he's been learning Ukrainian uh, as a project to help with you know, refugees and asylum seekers, and also wants to is encouraging his engineering engineering students and um, to choose one of their languages for him to learn as well. And he hopes that it will be a good example to show for other people to emulate that in the future, because it engenders a feeling of respect, of understanding, of wanting to know more about people. Absolutely learning languages is a really, really nice type of project to do. Um, and then other people, um, you know, say just maintaining language is, is the important thing. And then... Um, and that they'd love to have time for a new one, but it's not necessarily going to happen. So sometimes your project could be maintaining or exploring a new area of a language you already speak, and maybe you don't feel you have the time or capacity to, to learn other languages. So that's kind of um, where I am with my thoughts on it. And I, I want to uh, just, I have, I have some other questions that people have written that are not quite related exactly to this. Um, so I would rather that we go to um, to our questions here so that we have more time today to answer questions. I'm very conscious that last time we didn't. And I don't really know that I need to talk a lot about language projects. I think you've got the idea as to what I mean by them and why I think they're important um, in these 10 minutes. Um, so I'm very, very happy for you to start writing uh, some of your questions. I will have a look at the questions I have here as well and start going through them. Uh, but I want to take some questions that are more pertinent to the whole language learning project first, and then we can um, we can move to the other topics that we have, okay, that people have raised, because um, I think it's, it's good to answer general language learning questions or comments as well. Um, so remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. And if you haven't put a like on this uh, video, please do. It helps me to see that I'm getting doing something useful and that you enjoy it. And also that uh, other people will then get to see it in turn because the algorithm uh, responds to these kinds of things. So please do that. And remember, if you at any stage want to um, work with me or have very specific questions, you can always reach out to me on Patreon. Uh, you can also treat me to a coffee if you like on the coffee thing. I've popped the link in the description on YouTube. You're very welcome uh, if, uh, the, if, if, if you feel like it. You're welcome either way, uh, even if you just come. I, I, I just enjoy your company. Um, so let me see. There are some um, nice questions. I'm going to start on YouTube. Thank you for the um, questions and the hellos. Um, wie ist Ihre Meinung über Michael Thomas Method? Um, ja, ich, ich finde eigentlich die Methode ziemlich gut. Ich habe es ein paar Mal benutzt und ja, es hat gut funktioniert für mich. Also ich war, war in Japan und ich habe dort eigentlich mit Michael Thomas Japanisch. Ähm, ich habe den Kurs eigentlich ähm, gemacht und ähm, hatte die Sachen, die ich am besten weiß auf Japanisch, sind die Sachen, die ich genau von Michael Thomas gelernt habe, muss ich sagen. Und ja, weil eigentlich wie die Methode funktioniert, macht es eigentlich viel einfacher, weil du eigentlich so viel dran denkst und ähm, überlegst, wie man die Wörter und die Grammatik und alles zusammenfassen kannst, um eine Äußerung zu sagen oder was zu äußern, soll ich sagen. Wie? Also, weil du eigentlich eigentlich nicht schreibst, auch das, das hilft, weil beim, beim Japanisch lernen ist das so, dass wenn man eigentlich die, die Schrift auch lernt, ist es eigentlich ziemlich schwieriger, weil man ähm, so viel Zeit dafür braucht, die, die Schrift wieder zu schreiben oder ähm, zu er wieder, wiedererkennen oder so. Das ist ja schon ähm, eine ganz andere Sache und für mich ja auch ein anderes Projekt, muss ich sagen. Ähm, ja, das ist meine Meinung. <lacht> ich finde es gut. Okay, mal gucken. Ähm, Namaste from Croatia. Or as Italians would say, guten Tag. <laughs> okay, nice to see you. Namaste. Uh, was ist kakiato, jezikowodnia, 
сертификаты, да, у меня есть а, диплома факультета, я изучал а, иностранские языки в университете, в Великобритании тоже, и в Празе, и еще а, кредиты в университете тоже и в, в Швеции, а, но я изучал тоже и по турецкого в, в институте а, как это Юна Семре, <laughs> и поэтому я сделал А2, А1, А2 и Б1 для турецкого, а потом для русского у меня ничего, я только, может быть, 30 кредит, кредитов а, от факультета в Швеции, но это все. А потом это зависит очень много от, язы, от языка, потому что но иногда некоторые языки нет диплом и, и поэтому это невозможно э, изучать э, для, для диплома э, так далее так bonsoir bonsoir i really like the idea of making mixing long and short term um let me see sorry i just scrolled a bit too fast there Uh, okay, long and short-term goals. You like the idea of that in projects. Yeah, it allows you to learn, experience different languages at the same time without too much pressure. Exactly, Moritz, that's exactly why I do it as well. It's it's really, really good because you can you can even have a break. Like, for example, if you're doing an on, an ongoing course at university or whatever, yeah, you can study that on when during your summer holiday, but you can also break the monotony a little bit of studying one language if you want to study another, and it just satisfies that that desire sometimes to, to just sort of look at another language for a month, two months, three months. It's exactly why I do it as well. So I did it last summer with Estonian. I took a couple of months before I started learning um, Cornish again, at the, you know, with, with the, uh, for the grade two exam. Yeah. Um, Come gestisci le sessioni di speaking con i nativi quando vuoi migliorare il parlato? Uh -huh. Scegli prima gli argomenti o parli di quello che ti viene, di, uh, viene in mente a momento? Insomma, dipende molto da... De... Adesso, per esempio, per me è veramente usare le lingue per il lavoro, anche per i... La mia, la mia vita privata, quindi non è una questione di praticare la lingua per migliorare un, un certo livello per una cosa specifica, quindi con l'italiano diciamo così lo uso solo per comunicare e per usare per lavoro e basta, allora non ho bisogno di parlare di un tema così grande adesso, così esoterico, ma se a volte se voglio parla, parlare su un tema diverso e poi posso gestire, usare una conversazione con un'altra persona per fare questo. Allora sì lo faccio, ma non è una questione per me adesso, per tutti i progetti che, uso, che faccio adesso, a fare questo così tanto perché um, un progetto di solito è una, un livello abbastanza basso. Quindi non, è, non parliamo adesso della laurea o di un master di, di una lingua come, come ho fatto prima all'università. In, in quella epoca era un po' diverso tutto perché ho dovuto imparare bene il vocabolario e tutta la grammatica per eh, espressarmi un, su un livello superiore in diversi temi. Quindi non è come prima adesso, ma um, sì, certamente... Uh, ci vuole un po' di tempo anche per uh, tornare indietro a volte, per imparare meglio un, su un tema, uh, imparare meglio il vocabolario o praticare un po' la grammatica per, uh, per veramente parlare su un tema specifico. Ma sì, non, non sceglio proprio adesso, no, adesso non lo, non, lo, non lo faccio così così tanto. Se voglio ascoltare qualcosa, io ascolto qual qualcosa, perché... Anche a volte quello che penso io su un tema potrebbe essere uh, per me molto meglio ascoltare qualcuno con una conoscenza uh, molto più alta, uh, con delle esperienze più, uh, più, 
cosa, come dire, più normali di quello che ho io. Io, per esempio, io posso leggere un articolo, ma ci sono delle persone con un'esperienza molto più ampia, diciamo, quindi eh, per questo motivo preferisco ascoltare uh, su un tema diverso, un tema nuovo, per esempio. E poi, magari, anche se c'è l'opzione di parlare con qualcuno, ma quelle conversazioni a volte um, sono piuttosto più piuttosto una, una frustrazione per me, perché ehm, se, se uno non, non sa molto bene ehm, l'argomento, gli argomenti, eh, è molto, dive, è molto dif, difficile eh, parlare sul tema con eh, una certezza, una, non so, per parlare con... Una, sì, con, di essere sicuro, sicuro di, di quello che, che, che si può espressare. E per questo motivo non lo faccio così tanto. Sì. Uh, hola, Richard, tutto bene? Tutto bene, grazie. Hola, tutto bene? Um, have you done a project on learning lots of languages at the same time to see what happens? So I studied a number of languages at university at the same time. Um, and... It, it, it can work. The, the thing I would say about learning lots of languages at the same time is that once you learn a language, uh, you study a language, as soon as you add more, you divide your mental capacity to focus on a language. So you're already splitting your time, okay? Then the other thing that happens is that depending on how often or how much you're focusing on a certain language, actually it has uh, different influences on how you how you actually study or learn the language. So, for example, you study a language, let's say, intensively for four to eight hours a day. You are going to think about that language even after you finish studying constantly. You may dream about it, you may think about it um, you know, when you're in the bathroom or when you're eating or whatever else, because you're focusing on the language so much. If you learn a language and you just do half an hour a day, well, half an hour a day followed by the rest of the day doing other things, you're not actually going to think about the language as much, typically, unless you do other things with the language. So, in a very strange way, the more hours you spend in an intensive study period, actually the more extra hours you get for free, because you're consolidating it with your thoughts. And the less you do, the less you're actually going to consolidate it with your thoughts after the study period, if that makes sense. So, um, yes, I do study different languages at the same time, uh, but I also recognize that it slows me down as well. Um, very often it slows me down, unless it was kind of like the university experience was slightly different because I was at university and it was very, it was very focused for all of the lessons. So even though it was my time was still divided, um, it wasn't too bad. And also because I was studying languages from the same families, I found that I would pick up words in from one language and be able to use them then in the other one. Um, that can also lead to complications of confusion as well, but um, overall I found it quite useful to uh, to, to pick up new vocabulary. Um, okay. What's your favorite Northern English slang word? I scran. <laughs> I love it. Um, Northern English slang word. Um, so, I don't know if I've got a favorite. Probably Mither. Mither is probably my favorite because Mither is a word in Northern English, in lots of Northern English regions, right? Uh, that we think is a normal standard English word. And then we find out that it's not later on. And there may be people who watch this from the north who still don't know that Maya is not um, in the English dictionary um, as a standard English word. Um, that that kind of came as a surprise. And I think it's a really good word because it um yeah, it's it's a word that um that expresses quite a lot. And um, you know, to be mithered, don't mither me. It's kind of like bother, but there's more more than bothering. It's it's like someone who's more insistent and really if you if if 
if someone's m bothering you, they can yeah, they can bother you and can come back. But mithering feels stronger in a way. It's, there's something more to it. So mither, I think, is probably my favourite um, Northern English word. Um, but again, it's really weird because that's not even perceived in the North as a Northern English word. It's perceived as an English word, just generally. It's, it's very odd. Um, salut, salut, je suis aussi en train de planifier mes projets langue de l'été. Uh, perspective réjouissante. Oui, moi aussi, moi, je suis très content, j'adore faire ça. C'est cool, hein? uh, mais c'est vraiment cool. Tu vas faire quoi, les gars? Uh, Paul, c'est Paul, c'est pas Paul, le gars. Ah, salut. <rire> uh, je viens de me rendre compte que tu es. <rire> Attends, uh, parce que sur, un... sur YouTube, c'est pas clair, hein? mais je te connais de, de Twitter, je crois. Um, comment fue le último Polygon Gathering? Queremos un nuevo vídeo con Luca Lapariello. Sí, a mí también me gustaría hacer un vídeo con Luca, porque sí que hace mucho tiempo que no hemos hecho nada juntos. Y estábamos ahí juntos, hablando bastante, pero no, no hicimos nada juntos. A ver, la próxima vez vamos a hacer algo, si, si, si queréis. Sí que a mí, a mí también me gusta. Pues el gathering, en, a mí me gustó mucho. Eh, es que estaba... No solo para practicar los idiomas, porque para mí practicar los idiomas está bien, pero no es la cosa más importante de, de mi experiencia en, en, en el gathering o en la conferencia políglota, por ejemplo. Porque hablar idiomas es, sí que forma parte de, de mi vida cotidiana, así que hablo idiomas para mi trabajo, para mi situación familiar y también en mi vida normal con amigos y tal. Y con, con vosotros, ¿no? Hablo varios idiomas. Pero bueno, um, lo del gathering para mí es estar con gente, hablar, estar con gente con uh, los mismos intereses eh, que tengo yo y hablar, tratar de temas, asuntos interesantes, lingüísticos, que sí que para mí son cosas súper interesantes, súper importantes. Y eso sí que me gusta mucho. No fui a las presentaciones porque yo prefiero estar con la gente y hablar con la gente. Así que para mí siempre elijo la gente y hablar con otra persona en lugar de ir a, a ver las presentaciones. Que realmente me gustaría ir a apoyar a todo el mundo. Lo que pasa es que hay como dos presentaciones a la vez y no puedo elegir muchas veces. Pero puedo elegir la gente allí por por el gathering, hablando con ellos, y eso sí que me gusta mucho. Y, y para mí me lo pasé muy bien, ¿eh? y, y sí me gusta mucho. Y a ver, en México, a ver si nos vemos en México para, para la conferencia ahora, para la Colpalito Conference, la conferencia políglota, así que en octubre nos vemos ahí, espero. O si, si no ahí, pues en Polyglot Conference Globo, global, ¿no? la, la edición global que tenemos en línea. A ver si no vemos. How many hours a day did you study for those languages during your time at university? Wow, JR, it's a good question. Um, a lot. So university was very intensive for me. Um, I was not just studying the languages, I was speaking them a lot because I, I made friends with them, a lot of um, students that came over. And also, um, so the internet was quite new when I was at university. And... The thing that I discovered at university was, well, first of all, email. I hadn't, I didn't have email until I went to university. Um, but then also IRC, which is Internet Relay Chat. And I could chat with different people in different, lang in different languages on the internet, which is amazing. And so I was doing that a lot. It was a new technology and also a really great way to practice writing languages. Um, so I did that a lot. And then my course was very busy. I mean... So my degree is in combined languages. I have to, I have to stud, take at least three languages. So I took French, Spanish, Italian, and then I also did Portuguese um, as a subsidiary language, which is, means it was part of uh, the, the Hispanic Studies Department. Uh, so I did those four for my degree. And then I also sat in on the Scandinavian Studies degree. So I did Old Icelandic and Swedish as part of that. So I, I had a lot of classes, extra classes as well as my other ones. And then I did language exchanges as well uh, with Erasmus students that wanted to practice their languages, sometimes to practice their English, but for me to practice their language as well. Um, and I also did language exchanges for languages I wasn't studying. So 
um, in particular two that I did uh, quite a few times actually over the, over the years were Catalan and Romanian. I did some of that there. Um, so I got introduced to those. And then I was reading and studying other languages on the side uh, just for fun, but not anything serious, like sort of mini projects again. But not, I didn't, at that time, I didn't think of them as projects. I just picked up a book and, and played with the language a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I did, but it was very intensive. I mean, my entire life was focused on languages um, at university. I basically did nothing else. And then when I went to study abroad uh, from, you know, from the UK, because I studied in the UK mainly, but I went abroad and there, there was, again, no no internet actually in those countries then. And, um, and I was just there in the country speaking the language. I had no other choice. Uh, so that was, yeah, super intensive. Um, You've never heard of that word before, Billy. Wow, okay, MITHER. Yeah, M-I-T-H-E-R, MITHER. Um, cool. And MITHER's not a standard English word at all. <laughs> but um, we, we do think it is in the north. It's really it's really weird. Boa tarde. Olá, Richard. Brasil. Olá, tudo bem? Consistency, studying a language you're studying every day. Okay, is consistency studying the language you study every day um, important to learning your language or can you take days off? You can take days off. And in fact, you should, for example, if you're sick or if you've got other things to do, I think it's very important not to add additional stress to yourself, okay? So, look, the, the worst thing is when we take days off because we have to and we need to, we're human beings, and then we, with that, then if we guilt ourselves because we've done it, it makes it worse afterwards. If we just agree that we take the time off with ourselves, we can go back with a lot more clearer conscience and without the guilt and without the stress and without making ourselves feel bad or making ourselves feel stupid for doing it. So absolutely you can take time off. I have, and uh, look, it's, it's not it's not the end of the world it really isn't um it, it i know it's kind of people like to think that you have to do something every day or well, that's the end of it you know it doesn't doesn't happen but it does i mean look i can't i can't come online and pretend to you that i study every single day or have studied every single day of my life and this is how i am here now it wouldn't be fair and it wouldn't be true and it wouldn't be accurate and i also need to admit that sometimes it can be a negative thing to force yourself to do something when you're not in the right place we have different things going on in life and so be kind to yourselves seriously your your, your health and your well-being are the first priority and then learning a language it doesn't matter if you forget a few words or you slip back and you have to revise that doesn't matter because the language isn't going anywhere it's not disappearing off the planet just because you missed a day or two or a week of study and I've missed months of study for some of my projects sometimes it's not the end of the world it really isn't um yeah so just be kind to yourselves it is important to have consistency of course if you want to continue learning but what I'm trying to say is yes you do need consistency if you if you want to see it grow but at the same time it shouldn't be something that you beat yourself over your over the head with uh, just because you were sick or you had something you had to do or you couldn't study at a particular period in your life. Um, it should be guilt-free. It should be a positive thing that you enjoy. And um, it is a positive thing. I mean, you know, if you even if you learn a few new words a week, there are a few new words that you didn't know. So everything adds to your understanding of the world and things around us, right? Um, when it comes to learning things. Uh, ok, qual minha maneira de aprender outro idioma? Eu sou brasileiro, quero aprender alemão e inglês. Uh, inglês, é possível os dois idiomas uh, ao mesmo tempo? Se é possível, é possível, mas depende muito do, de você e como você tem que fazer as coisas na vida. Se você tem também trabalho, estudos, uh, na universidade, uma outra coisa na vida que você uh, precisa de fazer. Ou se também pode ser, com por exemplo, com a família. Eu, por exemplo, tenho com a família, tenho também para, uh, eu tenho uma, 
uma criança na escola, eu tenho que ir na escola cada dia, então, para mim, durante o ano acadêmico, eu não posso fazer todas as coisas no mesmo tempo, isso é impossível para mim. Mas, uh, é bem possível uh, decidir o tempo que tenho. Então, eu posso dizer, ah, se eu tenho, pode, pode ser uma hora, duas horas, cada, dia, cada semana, para aprender outra língua. Então, isso sim é possível. Uh, então, depende muito de você. Mas como eu, eu estava para dizer não, em inglês, eu estou dizendo em inglês, que uma coisa é, uma divisão do tempo uh, é uma coisa segura. <risos> Se você precisa fazer duas línguas no mesmo tempo. Porque uh, não somente o tempo que você precisa usar para, para estudar a língua mesma, mas também... Uh, Quanto tempo você tem para pensar na língua? Você tem também para considerar uh, o vocabulário, a gramática que você está aprendendo na língua mesmo. Então, isso são uh, duas coisas muito diferentes. Então, para mim, é sempre assim. Eu acho que se vá mais devagar com, com cada outra língua que você precisa ou quer aprender ao mesmo tempo com o com, com um idioma que vou agora aprendendo, por exemplo. Então, inglês e alemão, se que são línguas da mesma família, então, há uma ajuda com, com várias coisas para uh, entender melhor, por exemplo, a gramática, como funciona o inglês com a gramática alemão, mas também com o vocabulário, às vezes, o vocabulário básico que temos em inglês, com coisas como mal, de alguns, que temos que são iguais as duas línguas. Então, sem é possível. Precisa também de, de ver muito bem uh, até que ponto você uh, quiser uh, avançar devagar com a língua. Isso é uma coisa fundamental. E você também tem que pensar nisso. Uh, isso é uma pergunta muito importante para você. Uh... Oui, c'est Paul. Ah, cool. <laughs> Je reprends le russe et je et, et plein depuis des, des années d'études, d'accord Je vais travailler avec uh, ma fille qui va prendre le cabi. Oui, j'ai vu ça sur Twitter, c'est cool. Hein? Elle va prendre ça, pourquoi C'est cool, hein? c'est cool comme idée. Mais je, en fait, j'étais en train de réfléchir s'il y avait quelque chose que j'avais vu, mais euh, il y avait des livres, des livres de... Oh, C'était quoi C'était un site canadien, je crois avec des, des bouquins en plusieurs langues, mais je ne me souviens plus de, de nom. C'est dommage, je voulais reprendre, mais je n'avais pas, pas en tête quoi, le nom de, du site. Mais, euh, mais c'est cool. Salutan Richard, salutan, salutan Giri. Um, Richard, Richard, do you actually listen to podcasts or do something like extensive listening in order to learn languages? I think I've never heard you mentioning anything like this. I might be wrong. So, yeah, so I do, so listening, for example, and listening to podcasts, yeah, well, podcasts I have done. I don't, it's not something that was kind of around when I started learning languages so much. I used to listen to the TV and um, series. So, for example, when I lived in Germany, the Netherlands, and in the Balkans, I would listen to an awful lot of TV and radio um, so that I would hear the language all the time. And it just helped it to go in. I mean, They were languages, I've got to be honest, they were languages where I already could understand quite a lot uh, when I started learning. So it just helps to reinforce the, the language in your head and to expand vocabulary and to hear things in certain contexts. So so yeah, I do. I do definitely do that. And um and you know it's 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 a good way of um of improve improving your language is a good way of sort of getting extra practice with the language and it and it all helps so yeah i do absolutely um gentileza politeness uh estas tre cultura specifica concepte chune yes mi mi pensas que gi estas tre specifica concepta anca yes kai gentileza shana sa mi tre Ba, mi estas britio, ca, o, o britio, ca, mi pensas que gie estas anca tre, um, tre grava afero, um, gie estas en mia cultura uh, tre grava afero, um, 
in Britijo, mi parlos Britijo čio tage. <laughs> Šaino so mi, sed kaj mi pensas, ke džiš to sam kao um, auda, a, audi ale aj nomojn, kaj um, pensi, kaj refleši, kaj kun, um, kun gentilaj vortoj uh, rispondi ankao. Uh, kaj džiš to por mi uh, gentilezzo. Gentilezzo la ideo mem estas tre malsama um, afero en aliai kulturoi. Kaj ĝi estas ankaŭ vere interesa afero por mi. Mi, mi, mi vidis tion en, en aliai landoj dum mi estis um, um, kun aliai kulturoi kaj aliai lingvoj, ke l- mia ideo uh, de gentilezzo estis malsama kaj mi devis ankaŭ lerni iomete pri aliaj kulturoj kaj ale landoj kaj la la kaŭzo uh, ĝi estas um, malsama kaj mi ne sies pri tio <laughs> kaj mi devis um, aŭdi kaj aŭskulti la homojn uh, por lerni tion uh, kaj ĝi estas tre bona uh, ideo jes Ĉu vi havas interesa inspekto en esprimo la gentileco? Masa melin, jes, ĝi estas la ekzemple en la persa kaj en la mandarina. Jes, ĝi estas tre mal, malsama. Um, mi pensas, ke en anke ĉi tie en, en Makedonio ĝi estas ankaŭ uh, malsama kulturo. Kaj um, la, la feroj ke estas en mia kulturo gentilaj, en la makedona kulturo ne estas. Kaj uh, mi tuta do, devi, devas ankaŭ pensi pri tio. Mi, mi devas pensi pri tio. Kaj mi, mi faras tion, sed um, ŝajnas mi ankaŭ iomete malfacila proceso um, uzi uh, la, la justajn uh, aferojn en ĉio lando. Uh, char mi mi tute ne dominas ke mi, mi ne povus dom, domini uh, aliajn uh, gentilecojn en alia en, en, en tutajn uh, tu, tutaj landoj uh, gi tute uh, tre malfacila proceso sed mi provas kaj mi uh, mi mi, mi diras ankaŭ perdono <laughs> se mi se mi faras eron uh, any clue on resources for oh no i think that's what i just said um i, I saw that after I read the french one sorry so no i've not seen it if i if i come across that french the canadian website i'll let you know but i've, I've not seen anything i think asimil might have like a, a small book but nothing concrete as in like um a course i've not seen the fsi might have something I don't even remember if I've seen anything there, actually. I'm, trying, I'm going through my head now, but I can't think of it. Uh, Paul. Um, Avez-vous remarqué quelque chose de différent entre uh, Von Smith pour cause de son, uh, son autisme et des autres polyglottes uh, que n'avez pas? Um, non, parce qu'il y a, il y a plein de monde, en fait, dans la communauté polyglotte qui ont aussi de l'autisme. Donc... Uh, uh, je crois que pour cela, oui, il est, il est quand même beaucoup de monde que je connais. Um, il est très gentil, il a un trait assez prononcé en ce qui concerne l'apprentissage des langues, langues étrangères. Et puis, um, non, je ne vois aucun différence, aucune différence entre, uh, entre, entre lui et, et les autres que je connais. Uh, qual melhor maneira de aprender outro idioma? Ah, uh, então isso é a mesma pergunta. Um, hello, Richard. How have you been doing? Are you still working on Korean? I'm not at the moment. Me. Um, so at the moment, I've I've been I I did my Cornish exam um, yesterday, and so I was focusing on that, and also I was at the polyglot gathering, and so there's been quite a disruption to my Korean. So I'm kind of at the moment reevaluating what I want to do. I've taken a, a definite break at the moment in Korean. So I just agreed with myself that I would take a break for a few months uh, and regroup possibly after the summer. 
So over the summer, I'll kind of have a think about what I want to do and how I want to structure it. And um, and we'll go from there. But I do still follow people on um, social media and I do still read bits and bobs in Korean to not let it completely disappear. But um, it's a long process to learn Korean. It's a, a language that requires a lot of effort and a lot of time, uh, particularly because it's not a language that I come across in my day to day life where I am. Um, but thank you for the question. Uh, yeah. Uh, OK. Do you know the Guinness Book of Records stopped ranking the world's greatest polyglot? Absolutely, Flavio. And, and I think that's the best thing. There's no such thing as the best polyglot or the best whatever. I mean, it's so subjective. Um, it's a ridiculous concept. So I, I wasn't ever in favor of that uh, type of activity. And I think anyone that, that wants to take on a, a kind of a mantle or a title of the best polyglot, I think, um, yeah, I don't think it's the, it's the wisest of moves, if I'm honest, I really don't. Um, so yeah, I think it's basically a kiss of death if you do that. And um, absolutely, I, I never play that game and I, I'd never intend to. Um, it actually matters very little. Um, I learn an awful lot of stuff about language from people who are monolingual, to be honest. So, you know, you have to be quite humble when, when it comes to language learning. I mean, look, yeah, you can study all of these languages and it's great and it's fun and I enjoy it. And I do it because I enjoy it. I, that's, the, that's the main reason why I do it. I didn't do it because... Uh, you know, it, it doesn't doesn't ne necessarily do anything for me to c carry on learning, right? Apart from it feeds my soul. <laughs> it's, it's probably the best way I can describe it. Yeah, I, I get something, I get a kick out of doing it because I get to understand a little bit more of the jigsaw puzzle. It's like getting pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, and the jigsaw puzzle is enormous. And I feel that like I keep getting little, little pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that I can keep adding to it. And see, that, and then... Once you've got lots of jigsaw puzzle, then you're also focusing in on the jigsaw puzzle with a lens, and the lens gets sharper and sharper and sharper each time, so you can focus in and see the world in different ways. So this is kind of why I do it. it doesn't actually bring you anything else that I know of. Um, yeah, I might get a media interview. Um, look, it's nice to it's it's nice to, to for someone to say, "Oh, what you do is amazing. It's lovely. It's lovely." I, I really appreciate the kind words. And I appreciate the interest from media and I appreciate all of these things. Um, but I earn zero from that. And so in terms of, you know, like wealth, trying to be get wealthy, um, learning lots and lots of languages, unless you're sort of making very popular videos online. I mean, if you look at me on this channel, for example, right, I'm on, I'm on this channel. I've been on this channel for years i've been doing these lives for for however long i, I i'm not going viral with this kind of content I, <laughs> I understand that i i understand it and um it's not necessarily my goal to go viral with this kind of content but i talk about things i actually enjoy which nourishes the soul more and i get to spend time with people who also have a similar feeling and a similar idea and a similar mindset and making friends like that for me is way more important than that than, than sort of, I don't know, anything else really. But a title from the Guinness Book of Records on a topic that you know is impossible to, like if, you, if anyone's honest with themselves, it's, it's impossible to measure that kind of thing. It's impossible to say I'm the best or the worst or whatever. It's impossible. You, it, it's just impossible. And anyone who's intellectually honest knows that. And I, I can't be anything but intellectually honest when it comes to these kinds of questions. Um, so I would never, ever wish for anyone really to, to do that. And also it puts a barrier between other people. I mean, great. Well done. You know, you've, you've been named by the Guinness Book of Records as being the greatest at speaking a language. Wonderful. Then what? <laughs> What, what and you, you know it's not true because you, you you can't possibly interview everyone in the world but then what 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 do you do so yeah i'm glad that they've got rid of it i am glad they've got rid of it i think it was the right thing to do um it didn't work out well for the people that won it let's put it that way um 
So, <risos> perfeito, Rich, muito obrigado uh, pelas dicas de disciplina. Uso o melhor tempo é dedicação. Sim, isso, <risos> dedicação, isso. <risos> de nada. Do you think it's good to set aside some time every day to focus on learning vocabulary? Um, yes. A no, yes, yes, potentially, depends on how you're learning it. Learning vocabulary in context, learning vocabulary in... Um, depends what you're doing. Depends what you're doing, JR. Really depends what you're doing. So if it's just you end up doing like five hours a day of Quizlet, no. <laughs> Stop and learn the language. Because just learning vocabulary, no. Um, doing a bit of vocabulary learning is like at least going over it. But don't go like so crazy because... You need to, there's only so much the brain can retain over a certain amount of time. So potentially, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes of you're going to review vocab that you've you've been through or recorded from somewhere. It's usually good in context, but also um, if it depends on what you're learning. But if you're learning sort of types of words that are linked, linked words are quite handy to learn. Um, that, that's a good way of learning vocab, vocab, words that you can make a story out of that relate to other words. So yes and no, uh, depends how, how crazy you go. I've met people who just spend five hours a day who just do vocab and, but they don't necessarily speak the language. It depends what your goal is, I suppose, as well. I mean, vocab learning on its own is great, but look, to illustrate this better, there was a world memory champion or I don't know, maybe may not have even been a world memory champion, but he was, a, he was a memory champion anyway, of sorts. And he came over from New Zealand. He learned the Scrabble dictionary in French, won the Scrabble competition in France, but doesn't speak French. And he learned all of those words, but he can't use them to speak. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of where I am with it. It's, it's great if you want to do that, but if you... If you wanted to speak the language, um, the language is really important to kind of practice and speak and get it in context and use it. No problem. Plex, I respond. No, thank you. The Enson, is a man to check on us. Oh, Enson. Bilmiyorum şimdi. Pazartesi günü olabilir. Hayır, hayır. Çar Bilmiyorum, çarşamba. Bilmiyorum çünkü Borda Makedonya'da Türkçe sürekli kullanabilirim. Ve, ve bu yüzden merkezde, şimdi e, merkezde değilim. Ve bu hafta sonu hiç Üsküp'te değilim. Ama e, e, genellikle... Um, her her hafta uh, ve iki ya da üç kez um, her, haftada Türkçe konu, konuş, konuşuyorum ve okulda da um, Türk uh, aileler var ve ve onlarla ve Türkçe konuşabilirim ve merkezde de aynı aynı şey. Um, Ya da bu hafta, evet, bu hafta. Çarşamba düşünürüm ama. Ama yüzde yüz bilmiyorum. Ama evet, bu hafta. Dan Konrich'a, okay, let me see. Cornish, no way. Is there actually an active Cornish learning community out there? Any resources you can recommend? Me, of course I can. I love Cornish. So I actually wrote an entire blog post about Cornish because I like it so much. You can go to my blog which is speakingfluently.com, and there's an entire thing to get you started on Cornish. So feel free. We, we love to have more people learning Cornish in the community. It's a really open, really kind, really good community of people. And um, we have Zoom sessions where we practice Cornish. We have, uh, there are classes, there are all sorts of things you can do to learn Cornish. There are exams that you can take. There's, there's all sorts of stuff you can do with Cornish. It's really cool. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. Please do. I would love to see you. In if you if you want, send me a message. I'd be very happy to 
sort of direct you and help you and get you involved in the Cornish community. Cornish is wonderful. I really, really enjoy it. Um, I never imagined that that would be the case, actually. It's a language that I started learning because a friend of mine wanted to start learning it and said, oh, do you want to do it? And I thought, OK, well, it's similar to Welsh, so I, I should be able to learn it fairly easily. And um, I've just continued. I really, really like it. Como mestre usar para aprender uma língua partindo de livros de literatura, uh, escuta primeiro, lê primeiro. Eu uh, tendo a usar coisas uh, para aprender como uh, livros para aprender, uh, para aprender uma língua. Então, um curso. Isso para mim é uma coisa principal para mim, para começar a aprender outra língua. Então, uh, não como uh, começar a ler literatura na língua mesmo. Então, para mim, para começar isso. E logo, pode ser também com outros materiais. Uh, televisão, rádio, livros, tudo isso. Então, isso. Mas não é uma questão tampouco de escutar uh, e logo, ou, ou, ou ler primeiro. Eu faço as duas coisas no mesmo tempo. Então, isso, para mim, uma, uma língua é uma coisa completa. Então, eu faço todas as coisas no mesmo tempo. Então, isso para falar, para uh, escutar coisas, ou para ler coisas, ou para escrever também, às vezes. Eu faço tudo isso no mesmo tempo. Um, uh, let me see. Hello, Richard. Vou denken van uh, chinês en arabisch. Uh, talen. Chinees en Arabische talen, ik vind die eigenlijk heel mooi. Uh, ik heb Chinees en Arabisch eigenlijk uh, op de universiteit gestudeerd. Uh, niet zoveel. Arabisch heb ik alleen maar ja, een paar keer. In Leiden, de Universiteit van Leiden, uh, heb ik Arabisch de eerste keer in Nederland geleerd. En daarna heb ik ook uh, in de Universiteit in Zweden ook uh, geleerd, of gestudeerd. En uh, Chinees ook. Uh, de Universiteit in Zweden. Uh, dat was mooi. Uh, ik zou zeggen, ja, ik, ik, ik zou graag ja, nog een keer uh, ja, die, die talen weer leren en, en verbeteren. Want ja, die zijn gewoon goede talen om te kunnen spreken uh, ja, overal. Ik bedoel, voor mij dat is, uh, ja, is één ding die ik uh, ja, mijn leven nog een keer wil, wil leren of studeren. Um, en uh, ja, jij, spreek je dan die of, of leer je die of, of, of zoiets? Ja, maar ik, ik vind die mooi, hè? Prachtig. Uh, I have Cornish heritage and have the language on my list. I have a book, but not enough time to devote at the moment, sadly. First, you know what? There's something really nice about learning a language that you've got a connection to. Um, it's, it's a heritage language. Um, there's something really quite quite nice about that something um i'm going to be talking about this actually on 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 clubhouse uh, soon about learning heritage language and what it means having been through that with welsh it, it's really really nice um so i can recommend it it kind of it soothes the soul uh, learning cornish and it doesn't need to be a rush right i mean i i've been doing cornish for what, two years and I'm probably around about an A2-ish level. So it doesn't need to be a rush. It can, it slowly, uh, slowly but surely wins the race. And it's just an awful lot of fun. People are very nice, nice community. Um, so I can definitely recommend it. And if you want to reach out, let me know. I'm help, happy to support anyone who wants to learn Cornish. Um, Richard, are you an, you're an example. Thank you very much, that's so kind. But please, can you make a video about how to teach languages to children? I want my kids to grow up bilingual, mixed family here. Which, which languages do you have already in your family? Um, let me see. What's your opinion about buying too many books, resources, and not being able to go through them all? Um, being honest with yourself that that's what you're doing is the first step, uh, because otherwise they can sit on the on the shelves and uh, annoy you. Uh, so that would be the first thing. But yeah, maybe concentrate on what you want to do. Um, and, and and recognize that it will be something you dip into maybe and you may never read it's fine to acknowledge that but acknowledging it is important French and Flemish yeah well absolutely I, I mean I'm happy to sort of feel free to write some more questions I can possibly do something like that on raising children so um, maybe I'll do one for 
for a future life i'll do a, a raising children in different languages and um and you can ask me specific questions that's what you do let me see i'm going to the instagram just to make sure i've caught up with things okay um let me see what do you think is easier for a non-native spanish speaker to learn next italian portuguese or french for a non-native Spanish speaker to learn next, Sp Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, French. Okay, so it depends on your level of Spanish, but <clears throat> uh, the easiest one to not mix up with Spanish is French because it's the furthest away. Um, Portuguese and Italian are closer, so they are easier to mix up. So French. And then French will help you also with the others, uh, particularly pronunciation and stuff. Um, yeah. New friends, you yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you for the kind comments. I, I really appreciate it. It's really sweet. Remember, if you if you're not following or if you haven't liked, please do. Um, it shows uh, shows me you're here and I'm saying something useful. Qual é o que você tem mais dificuldade para aprender? Para mim, o Giano. Isso era a língua que eu não aprendi. Dá uma língua que é Não falo, mas porque eu, era uma língua com uma gramática bem complicada e também com vocabulário bem específico para a pronúncia, para a pronúncia de, da língua mesmo é difícil, porque tem seus possíveis uh, também entre consonantes, muito, uh, com, umas combinações bem difíceis para a pronúncia. What's the least spoken language you speak? Probably Cornish. I think there are about 500 people who speak it. Um, I don't I don't speak it particularly well yet, but there are probably a couple of thousand that are studying it and about 500 maybe that speak it. I'm not sure of the exact statistics, but that will probably be the, the language that doesn't have as many speakers at the moment. But it's growing and um, and the, the, the community is really active. And I, yeah, I, re I really love it. Um, how long have you been studying languages? Uh, almost all my life i mean from the age of five I've, I've just always liked languages and different accents and things so i've been practicing speaking different with different accents and different styles for a long time um uh okay Ariga, arigato gozaimasu oh, okay those are okay let me see did i miss a question how did you trans how did you transition from learning italian for two years and now switching to Japanese? oh uh, Japanese. Oh, um, so I don't know if that was for me, uh, but I, I studied Italian at university and my university degree is in Italian, but Japanese I studied at university in Sweden for just um, a semester. I didn't do that much at, at, uh, Japanese, just enough to kind of be able to read hiragana, katakana, some kanji and some basic grammar. Um, ready to go to Fukuoka for the Polyglot Conference when it was there in 2019. Questa volta siamo anche su Instagram. Ah, adesso. Ah, va bene. Sta per qualcun altro. Allora, non era per me. Va bene. Allora, vediamo. Ahoy, ahoy. Okay, now I've got the questions on Instagram. Great. Good, 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 good. I can go back to the other ones. Fantastic. Uh, tips for learning vocabulary. I did an entire thing actually on vocabulary last week. So feel free to have a look. I won't repeat everything I said, but basically um, focusing on the kind of vocabulary you want to learn, making sure you're learning relevant vocabulary for you. And also thinking of things to help you like hooks, whether it's using etymology, uh, using um, imagery to help use like that people use for um, for memory techniques generally they always tend to help with that kind of thing um, <clears throat> okay i can see more people here now than before i can see some more questions i've been learning italian for two years okay how do you transition to learning um japanese and not losing your italian uh, look there's the there's going to be a point where when you focus on a new language, particularly if it's a new language where you have to really dedicate a lot of thought time to, like Japanese, um, it's natural that you'll feel some 
movement in your Italian. That's normal and, and it's fine. It will even out over time because there's always kind of a language gain and language loss. It's part of life. So sometimes I'll speak a language better one day than another day and it's absolutely normal. So even on this live, um, there are things that I was like searching for in my head that normally would just come to me like that or things that sometimes come to me and other times won't. <laughs> it's it's all very uneven. Um, that's true for everyone, um, not just me. It's just that we don't always like to <laughs> admit to it, but yeah, it's true for everyone. So yeah, it, it's normal that you'll have some unevenness with it, but you will, um, it will get better. And it's possible. I mean, people do it. People, people do learn more than one language. Um, shalom. Shalom in Israel. Ah, shalom. Shalom in Macedonia. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, super je. Okay, let me see. Live streamy. Děláte v neděli. A to je super jako motivace do začátku nového týdne. týdne. <laughs> Díky. <laughs> Díky moc. Um, tips for learning vocabulary. Yeah, I think I got that one. Let me see. Do, 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 do. Okay, what do you think during the lear learning of a new language, doing exercises? Why not? I mean, if you can concentrate on both things, make sure you don't hurt yourself. So there's a health warning there. <laughs> don't let the language mean that you hurt yourself. I would hate for you to hurt yourself. Um, I'm going to have a look at some of the questions I got before we started, just to see, uh, make sure I covered these as well. My... My weird hard project, taking a break for languages for a month. Yep, that's a, an interesting project. Taking a break can be a project in its own right. And that's a good thing. It's good that you're very, very conscious of that. I like that. After two years of studying Italian. Okay, that one I saw. I uh, love reading na uh, native books. Uh, take it ages. Yes. Google Translate camera recognizes my handwriting in Tamil and Hindi. Fantastic. Um, to what extent does native level proficiency influence the understanding of certain ideas oh yeah it changes it changes your perception for sure this is where i'm i'm not a it changes your personality person i'm a it changes your perception and and adds to your your perception of in things absolutely absolutely because you understand the the logic behind some thought patterns that before seemed odd or sometimes even people describe as stupid but it's amazing how quickly you or something that even become no, was normal for you that seems silly uh, from your own culture. It's quite, it's quite weird. I've had that, absolutely. Um, the harm of absorbing only one type of language register can have on language learning. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, so if you're, if you're actually talking about this the other day, when people learn swearing, for example, in a language, or you learn from people who swear a lot, and it's in a friend group, it can be quite, a pro quite problematic then to to you then use more acceptable language in different situations. So yeah, it's it's um, learning learning register actually is, a, I mean, it's a later stage thing in language learning, but I would always suggest that we try and learn a, a more neutral way of speaking first. Because if we learn very slangy or very formal, formal probably is also difficult for people, but the more standard, the better in the beginning, that um, learning the register is really important later, absolutely. And it takes practice and time and feedback, listening to people as well. Let's be quite active in your, in your learning and studying and listening. Suggested for future live, uh, language learning and the job market. Great. That's a really good one. I like it. Um, it's too long an article. Uh, I've, done, I've done a mini immersion weekend, but I love them. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. It, it, uh, what's the most difficult language you have learned? So for me, and I, I mean, saying I learned it is 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 exaggerating. Uh, for me, Georgian I found um, quite 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 difficult um, because of the pronunciation, because of the grammar potentially to a degree. But pronunciation, found, I found it hard to remember the words. Um, and yeah, I'd say I would say that would be the language that I found the, the most challenging so far. Um, and I studied it for a year at university in, in Malmö, 
and still I can, I can barely say a thing. Uh, ¿Cómo mantener la motivación para el aprendizaje de idiomas? Pues eso depende de ti. Realmente es que si quieres, por ejemplo, aprender más idiomas, sí que lo vas a hacer, pero uh, la motivación depende de qué idioma estás aprendiendo, por qué lo estás aprendiendo, por ejemplo. Si tienes, no sé, interés en, en lo que hacen, por ejemplo, en el país, en los libros, o la tele, o lo que sea, puede ser cual, cualquier cosa. Pues... Eso sí que es una cosa que ayuda bastante para motivarse, para continuar con el aprendizaje del idioma. Eso para mí, por ejemplo, utilizando el idioma, por ejemplo, con otra, otra persona, sí que me ayuda mucho. Porque si es un, un idioma que voy a utilizar para mi vida cotidiana con, con otra persona, para mi trabajo, para mis amistades, por ejemplo, así que voy a continuar aprendiendo. Uh, si no, sí que no, no veo el por qué. Eso sí que para mí resulta mucho más difícil aprender o continuar aprendiendo el idioma uh, y para mí sí que eso es, significa la motivación uh, muchas veces uh, si tienes el, el por qué tienes tu motivación uh, moi j'apprends uh, ma sixième langue je me arrivé a un bon niveau uh, comme mes autres langues mais j'ai pas déchoué Uh, <laughs> ça veut dire que qu'il est qu'il est temps d'arrêter peut-être non il faut uh, il faut vaincre le peur de d'échouer en fait ça veut dire quoi en juste échouer échouer quoi en fait tu vas faire quoi échouer d'apprendre une langue comme toutes les autres langues je sais pas pour moi en fait ça vaut la peine, en fait, d'apprendre une langue, même si on apprend juste un peu. Pourquoi pas Pourquoi, pourquoi est-ce qu'on doit être si sérieux pour chaque langue Pourquoi est-ce qu'on doit faire la même chose à chaque fois Si, disons par exemple, si on prend, euh, je ne sais pas, si, si on prend, si on prend deux, trois chapins à la maison, le troisième malade n'arrive pas à faire euh, ce qu'ils font les autres chapons. Ça veut dire qu'il y a moins de valeur dans ce troisième chaton Non. Même s'il est malade, il peut donner de l'amour, il peut, il peut enrichir ta vie. Et ça change, ça change ta vie, ça change tes perspectives. Ça t'aide à continuer d'avancer dans la vie. Et à mon avis, même, mais c'est ça en fait. Ça c'est à mon avis... Ce que tu ce que t as, t as écrit là, ça c'est à cause de, du système scolaire, c'est tout. Parce qu'on croit que euh, si ce n'est pas parfait, si ce n'est pas ce qu'on fait pour les examens, ça ne me pas la peine. Ce n'est pas vrai. Ce n'est pas vrai. c'est pas vrai. Donc, à mon avis, si tu as envie d'étudier une autre langue, pourquoi pas Tu peux le prendre comme un projet et te dire, oui, c'est quelque chose que je fais à côté. Et si, ça, si tu vois que ça va continuer, super, si ça ne continue pas, ça va. Tu peux faire un autre projet si tu veux. Tu peux aussi même continuer avec les autres langues. Tu peux faire ce que tu veux dans la vie. en fait. Mais si tu as envie de faire ça, ça c'est la question. Je crois qu'il faut, qu faut faire ce que tu veux. Um, let me see. What do you think during the learning? Okay, I think I got that one. Doing, oh, doing exercises. Are oh, they doing exercises? We're talking about exercises actually for sports. I just realized exercises are in a book as well. We could, I could have interpreted it that way and I didn't. But yeah, exercises in a book potentially. Okay, they're a bit boring sometimes. Um, I, I like exercises in a book in groups sometimes because you get to talk about them and they become they they become more interesting. But exercises as in like lifting weights or something. Yeah, just be careful. <laughs> okay, how do you learn Polish? I'm Polish and just interested to see if it's easy or not. Um, yes, I studied Polish. I st spent time in Poland. Um, I can communicate my ideas in Polish. It's not perfect. I make lots of mistakes, but um, I don't need to speak English in Poland. Is Polish easy? 
Um, okay. <laughs> so I know there are, there are a lot of countries where people think that their language is the hardest or one of the hardest languages in the world to learn. Poland is one of those countries. Czech Republic is another. Slovakia is another. Lithuania is another. There are many of them. Most countries think this about the language. Honestly, if you're from, let's say, Cambodia or Vietnam, Polish is going to be hard. There's no way around it. If you're from Czech Republic or if you speak a Slavic language to a very high level, Polish is not particularly hard. Uh, because you already have a lot of the base knowledge, vocabulary, grammatical ideas and concepts. So it's not the end of the world. And it's also easier than to understand when people speak. So for me personally, after having studied Czech and uh, and a number of other languages, but Czech principally because it's most closely related to Polish, Czech for me was a hard learning process and it was a steep learning curve. It took me a long time to get to a point where I could speak and speak well. Um, at the moment, I don't even know if I'm there anymore, uh, but I can still understand it well. I can, I can communicate still. It's not like it's gone. Um, but um, it did make learning Polish a lot easier, for sure. And I could communicate in Polish quite quickly. Um, not well, but I could communicate quite quickly. Um, and Polish people speak to me in Polish. They don't change language when they speak. Most of the time because they can't, but sometimes even when they can, they don't. So I spoke it a lot at the gathering, in fact, in Warsaw. I spoke a lot of Polish in in, uh, in Poland. Yeah, so, yeah, I have. Okay, I've got some more questions here on in on YouTube. So I'm going to go up here just to see if I can answer these. Okay. Um, good afternoon. Wow, okay, I've... So many more questions. I didn't realize how many. That's so many. That's cool. Thank you. Um, okay. So we're back to uh, Pond Dog. Pond Dog. Pond Dog. I, that's cool. <laughs> I think I read, when I read names and things, I sometimes read them in, in different ways than, than I'd expect. And then I, it takes me a while for it to click because I, I go through different pronunciations in different languages to get to it. So Poondog, yeah. Are you ever going to continue learning Icelandic? Interesting question. Um, yes, <laughs> is the very short answer. Um, I'm going to be in Iceland again soon. So I'm looking forward to speaking Icelandic again. And hopefully I will have chance to improve my Icelandic too. So yes. Yes, absolutely. I love Icelandic. It's a country that I love going back to. It's I like the people. I like the language. I like I like everything about like pretty much everything about Iceland. I, I love Iceland. Uh, it's one of my favorite places to be. Um, I've got countries that I particularly love because the people are just so lovely. Um, and then places that I like because I, I just like the life there. Um, so Iceland, I love. I like the life in Iceland. I enjoy it. I could quite happily live there. Um, yeah. But yeah, just for just this summer again, uh, I will I will visit Iceland. I will talk about that more in another video. But yes, interesting you mentioned that. <laughs> okay. Split time to okay. Split time to two parents. Oh, one language. Okay, yeah, you're answering that question. I see. Hi, Richard. Catching the end of watching Professor Aguilas news feed. Wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yoga Bliss. Um. Yeah. I saw that it it came up on my um on my sort of recommended thing as well. Yeah. He's such a nice guy. I like Alexander a lot. Uh, Professor Aguilas is great. Um. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me see. Uh, do you th think there's any evil? Do you think there is evilness in language learning? Evil in learning languages? I don't know. Is there? Who knows? I mean, people are all different. I mean, people could have very different agendas, I guess, but I don't know. Um, potentially. Who knows? Um, no, I, I, gen I generally think it's a positive thing. Um, is it evil? No, I can't. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> um, 
Okay, let me see if I can. Good afternoon. I am in a bilingual family, Greek English. Uh, recently, been able to get published, get published a bilingual children's book inspired by my son Christos, called Greeklish Adventures of Christos. Oh, that's really nice, Craig. Yeah, congratulations. That's really really nice. I'm glad that, I'm glad I could give you a bit of a shout out on here as well. That's really nice. Moi, j'apprends. Okay, as I saw that on the other one, didn't I? Si je ne vois pas. Oui, j'ai vu San Diego. Um, ici. I happen to know quite a few Cornish speakers. We've been twinned with small Cornish town for over 30 years. Wow, great language. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're really, it's really, really nice, Paul. I, I like them a lot. Um, which town actually in Cornwall? Which town are you twinned with? Uh, they spoke German to each other. And then we're looking to, okay, that's good for me. Are Flemish and Dutch mutually intelligible? Absolutely, Flavio. So it, Belgium and the Netherlands both have Dutch as their official language. Flemish is the version spoken of the spoken version of the language in Belgium. So uh, the official languages, the official languages of Belgium are uh, Dutch, French, and German. They're the official three languages of Belgium. And then uh, the Netherlands has also different languages, but it's they're both called Dutch in both countries as the official language. But then the way you speak it, there are different um, spoken forms that have different names. And the spoken form in Belgium is called Flemish. Um, just like in Switzerland, you have... And they are they are pretty much mutually intelligible, yes. It's not like Swiss German and German, like High German, Standard German and, and Swiss German. Um, if they speak proper Swiss German and not just the accent, as many German speakers perceive Swiss German to be, um, they would they often need subtitles for, for, for Swiss German stuff in Germany. Whereas um, Flemish, you may need subtitles for certain things, depending on what kind of um, variation person speaking. But uh, generally speaking, yeah, I mean, you can you can have quite a normal, reasonable interaction between the two, uh, Flemish and Dutch. Um, Makedonya konuşuyorlar ve bu yüzden Türkçe her zaman kullanabilirim um, onlarla yani ama um, evet çok güzel ve çok ilginç bir dildir um, Arapçadan Farsçadan kelime var ve ve bu yüzden bence daha bence şimdi daha iyi anlıyorum ne neden uh, bu kelimler uh, geliyorlar ve ve bu yüzden ben Türkçe çok 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 seviyorum <gülüyor> evet her zaman şimdi Star Trek uh, Türkçe'de um, izliyorum uh, evet ve çok çok iyi bir dildir uh, evet uh, let me see would you say that your retired from learning languages to a high level and is now just taking short projects. Uh, Pavel, I don't know. I've not made that kind of decision. I don't know what the future will bring is the very honest answer. Um, while my daughter's been at, at school, um, definitely it's, you know, going and living in other countries and really getting into a language has been a, a challenge. I mean, you know, spending a couple of a month or so maybe has been possible, but not much more than that. Um, in the future, when I when I start uh, when I, when I travel, if I ever travel more, if I go and live in another country for more than a few months, who knows? Who knows? I just don't know. Um, it could be that other projects take me to other things. 
I, I haven't made any any definite decisions, but um, I do enjoy the short projects for the moment, and and they all help to kind of build um, my understanding uh, of of more things. Uh, but nice question, yeah, uh, not at the moment. You like my conception of an an anchor language. Anchor languages are important to me as a as a concept because it it helps me to to really keep languages as well sometimes that otherwise I don't really practice. So languages like Catalan, for example, I find uh, because of the anchor language idea in my head, I, I'm able to to consider Catalan when I'm speaking other Latin languages. Jib, what were some of the first words you taught your child when they were little? Oh, I, oh, wow, everything. I just used to speak normally. Um, I mean, sing a lot. I'd sing a lot. I would talk a lot and describe everything around us. So um, the first words that that a child needs to learn are the words that are important to the child, right? So I'm, I'm very much um, I'm very much in favor of learning things that are important to the individual. So the thing that, so things that are going on in the child's world. So things like the foods they're eating, um, the clothes they're wearing, the daily routine, you know, when you wash them, when you bathe them, when you dress them, when you play with them, when you do all of these different things that go on with a child, that they understand all of that vocabulary. So all of that kind of stuff. And then games, toys that they have, uh, programs they watch, and interacting with all of that, so that they have words to express what they're seeing. So that was what I did um, in, a, in a nutshell. Um, and and that was in, in multiple languages. Yeah, so there weren't first words per se. We do highlight daddy and mummy a lot. <laughs> That's quite a normal thing to do. So, um, but yeah, Craig, that's 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 what I that's what I did. Um, uh, comment t'as pris uh, l'hébreu? Tu parles l'arabe aussi? J'hésite entre les deux. Um, en fait, oui, j'ai étudié l'hébreu un peu parce que j'avais des copains uh, ici qui parlaient l'hébreu chaque jour. Je croyais c'est dommage de pas apprendre un peu. Um, j'ai étudié l'arabe plusieurs fois. Euh, mais je ne parle pas, je n'arrive pas à parler. C'est plus facile à apprendre à parler l'hébreu, à mon avis, parce que bah, la langue est construite comme ça, en fait, pour, pour être plus facile pour les gens qui vont aller habiter là-bas et parler la langue, utiliser la langue avec les gens. Donc, euh, ça dépend ce que tu veux faire. Si tu as des copains, ou des amis, ou, je ne sais pas, une connexion... Euh, spécial avec avec une langue ou l'autre mais euh, mais oui je crois que pour parler c'est plus facile l'hébreu l'arabe est plus difficile et ça dépend aussi ce que tu vas faire en fait si tu vas prendre en si on dit les dialectes euh, l'arabe enfin c'est à peu près des langues mais enfin le dialecte euh, c'est plus facile que l'arabe standard parce qu'il est assez compliqué en ce qui concerne la grammaire et tout ça euh, et aussi le vocabulaire, mais, euh, mais ça, ça change aussi ce que tu vas faire. Et il y a moins de matériaux, par exemple, pour les, les dialectes, ce qu'on a, qu a pour l'arabe standard, ça c'est clair. Mais à mon avis, ouais, prologue, si tu veux regarder pour l'hébreu, il y a prologue, ils ont fait des cours d'hébreu, de, super. Il y a ulpan, il y a aussi prologue pour la communication en hébreu. Il y a des trucs, même des vidéos, quoi. C'est assez facile à regarder, à apprendre des choses de base, quoi, de la langue hébreu. Let me see. You can hook up with Dr. Jackson Crawford in Iceland and compare notes. Funny you say that, Craig. I wrote a message on, I saw a video of his, and just this morning, in fact, Dr. Jackson Crawford. And um, he was talking, they were talking about um, Proto-Indo-European. So I was like, it came up as a recommended video. So I, I clicked on it and watched it. And I really enjoyed the discussion. And he mentioned at the end that he was going to Iceland. So I just wrote, if you were in Iceland, I'd be very happy to treat you to a coffee. He's, he seems like a really nice guy. So um, I'm genuinely really interesting. So yeah, I would, I'd love to, I'd love to meet him. Um, 
in Iceland. Who knows? We might be there at the same time. Um, I'll see. Um, but if, I don't know if he even sees the, the all of the messages because he's quite quite a popular YouTube channel. So he may or may not see the message. I don't know. Um, but I left it there. And if he's if he's interested and he wants to meet up, then I'd be very happy to meet with him. Um, of course, I mean he's he's super interesting. Um, you can recommend a resource for understanding how Georgian verbs work. Con can I recommend? Uh, okay, for a, a resource for understanding how Georgian verbs work, conjugation, tense, prefixes, etc. They're notoriously difficult to get one's head around. Um, uh, so during the Polyglot conference, we did um, a Georgian six-day Georgian course, five, five or six days, six, five, I think six days, Georgian course. And we covered some of that in that. They're not released publicly, but they are available to anybody who is um, subscribed to the Polyglot Conference webpage and you've got a ticket and you can access the online environment. So we still do like language exchanges in there and the videos from the conference are still available to see in there. Um, they're just not publicly available yet. They will be at some point, but not yet. I don't know when, there are lots of videos to work on and release. So um, you're welcome to check those out, obviously, but also, um, I'm trying to think if there's any way that I can make it easier, but I, I mean, I found it personally quite difficult. Uh, somebody who did or has been learning Georgian with more success than I have is is Stefano. Um, Stefano is great. He's a, an Italian learner who speaks uh, Finnish. He's got a YouTube channel and uh, Instagram channel. If you want, I can just write to me and I'll I'll send you his links, or I can try and link it in the in the video on YouTube. Um, link to some of his, his stuff but he's he's great and he's been learning uh georgian and doing very well yeah by by all accounts so yeah he's doing better than me <laughs> uh, o en, en Instagram también, que en, enseñan el idioma, pero uh, aparte de eso no, no hago nada. Uh, veo de vez en cuando, pues cada día hay algo, ¿no? Pero de vez en cuando, muy de vez en cuando. No, no lo hago así, en plan, para aprender, aprender mejor ahora ya. Uh, han pasado muchos años y, y pues con, uh, con el Estonio que estaba estudiando, estudiando también, luego se convirtió el idioma en, en Estonia. Y, a ver, más, más tarde a lo mejor va a volver a mi finlandés para, para hablar bien un día, a lo mejor. ¿Quién sabe? Vamos a ver. Uh, pero sí, me gustaría, me gustaría volver. Me gustaría volver a este idioma también, me gustó mucho. ¿Sprechen Sie hindi y wenn ya, ¿qué material haben Sie zum Lernen benutzt? Eigentlich nicht. Ähm, ich, hab, ich kann die Sprache eigentlich sehr wenig. Ähm, oh, aber ja, es gibt vielleicht andere Leute, die besser, antworten, be besser beantworten können. Ich kann das nicht so gut oder nicht hundertprozentig sagen, was am besten wäre. Ähm, das wäre vielleicht von meiner Seite ein bisschen Quatsch, äh, wenn ich das so sagen würde. Aber, aber ja, ähm, Ich habe zum Beispiel ja die Teacher Self und so benutzt, aber schon lange her. Und ja, ob das ja das Allbeste ist, weiß ich nicht, aber das habe ich benutzt. Ich habe auch eine Assimil Hindi, habe ich auch. Ähm, habe ich auch ein bisschen benutzt, aber ja, mehr nicht. Ähm, und wenn ich sage, ja, zum, zum Beispiel ja, ein bisschen benutzt, das heißt, ich habe ja ein paar Stunden oder so. So, wirklich nicht viel. Ähm, ich kenne Personen, die, die parlen Hebräu. En ligne, par exemple, ça serait peut-être. Parce qu'il y a plein de monde. Euh, il y a même des gens qui parlent Hebräu euh, dans la communauté euh, des langues. Euh, peut-être ici, quelque part. Euh, ok. I may have to disappear soon. 
that's what you're doing too, Craig. Fantastic with uh, speaking English. Okay, so it's English. And his Greek is coming on. But he's not yet four. Yeah, it takes time. And he'll mix them as well. If he's, if he's only four, it takes time for them to separate out and stuff like that. Um, but yes. Ben je ooit in België geweest? Ja, 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 tuurlijk. Ik heb in Rotterdam gewoond, dus dat is vlakbij. Uh, dus ja, ik heb uh, ja, best wel van, uh, ja, van België ook gezien hoor. Um, ja, ik vind ja, het een, een mooi land. Uh, It would be great, Jim. I'm sure. I'm sure he knows you. Yes, I saw that that video too. Okay. I mean, I, I never suppose I never suppose that people know who I am, um, even in the language learning community. There were people at the Polyglot gathering who came up to me and, and just didn't know who I was, or and the people around me found that quite weird. I, I didn't, because in my normal life. Um, Obviously, I'm not famous in any way. I mean, I'm known in some circles of a language learning community, right, on our online language learning community, but I'm not not famous, so I don't have any weird idea that people should know who I am. It almost feels like one of those joke things, you know, you, go, you walk into a shop and you say, have you got any idea who on earth I think I am? And it's, it's not, it's not me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he, he may know who I am. I don't know. I don't suppose that. Um, I mean, if, if he knows who I am and he sees my comment and he's interested in meeting up, then that'll be great. But as I say, um, uh, I don't expect anyone to know who I am. Uh, what about the Georgian question? Stefano's YouTube channel is called Lingua uh, e Passione. Thank, thank you very much, Maurizio. Lingua e Passione. Yeah, exactly. Language of passion in Italian. Yeah. Yep. And Stefano's lovely. I, I I really like Stefano. He's such a nice guy. He's so so nice. He really is. He's just he's just one of those people. It's just lovely to have around. He's just super super sweet. Um, and I saw him in in in, um, in Poland, and he was he's just lovely. He really is a lovely lovely guy. Um, thanks for the answer, Richard. Yes, I've just looked up Stefano Georgian and found the videos you mentioned. You're very welcome. And, yeah, enjoy. He's he's he is he's, he's, he's such a nice guy. He's such a such a nice guy. Uh, sind Sie Deutscher Muttersprachler? Nein, eigentlich nicht. Nein. Aber vielen Dank. Das ist ein, eine, eine schöne Sprache, eine schöne Frage für mich. Nee, ich komme aus Großbritannien, aber ich habe Deutsch mit 22 gelernt oder so. Ja, nach der Uni. Ich bin nach Deutschland umgezogen und ich wollte Deutsch lernen und habe in einer deutschen Familie gele gelebt und ja, dadurch habe ich ja, mein Deutsch eigentlich gelernt. El Swahili? Una sema ki Swahili. <lacht> uh, en ce moment, non, je fais rien avec Swahili. Uh, Peut-être que je vais revenir. Uh, J'adore le Swahili. J'adore mes, mes leçons avec, uh, avec Glory, mais enfin, on va voir dans l'avenir. Ah, parce que c'est vachement difficile d'utiliser une langue comme ça. Et si tu n'as pas, pas de projet pour aller, à, aller passer un peu de temps là-bas, c'est difficile à à vraiment utiliser la langue et, et voir le pourquoi, parce que si tu utilises jamais, c'est difficile, quoi. Parce qu'il faut que je prenne tant de temps de ma, de ma journée pour, un, pour trouver des, des matériaux, pour utiliser la langue avec quelqu'un en ligne ou puis bien faire quelque chose d'autre. C'est hyper difficile. Il n'y a pas grand-chose, par exemple, pour suivre des gens sur les, euh, les réseaux sociaux. C'est un peu plus difficile à suivre pour un que pour, par exemple, les autres langues que j'ai étudiées. Donc, ça, c'est pour moi un peu plus difficile. Mais j'adore la langue et j'aimerais bien l'apprendre. Euh, voyons. Which languages do you consider the most beautifully sounding? So, I, I really like... Um, so, in terms of like languages I understand well, I love German. I think German sounds beautiful. Um, in terms of how people express themselves. I love the, the way of expression in German. Uh, but I think the sounds of a language, I, I really like the sound of Icelandic and I like the sound of, I like the sound of Estonian. Um, um, I also like, actually, I do like the sound of Hindi um, as well. Um, what else? 
and, and, and actually other languages from India. But I, I like generally that the sounds that you hear in a lot of those languages, and I can't say all of the languages that I would, would possibly equate to a similar sound, but there are certain sound types, you know, that this kind of that type of sound. I just think it sounds so relaxing and lovely. Um, that's why my favorite English is Indian English. I love Indian English. I think it's, it's so nice to listen to. It's just, oh, it's the best. Um, but yeah, I do, I like those sounds. Uh, other languages, I'm not sure, that, that like particularly excite my ear. Um, those are the, probably the ones that stand out to me at the moment as I think about it. Um, I teach yourself Hindi. That's some good as well. Okay, uh, thank you for the um, yeah for for saying that that was good as well. I don't. I always feel a bit weird saying that a book that I used and I didn't really study the language is is a good book because feels disingenuous. It doesn't feel like I'm giving a realistic recommendation. But I, I did enjoy what I did used for it. And the Flanders accent, perhaps? No, actually, not. Yeah, so. Uh, Nay, that that I need to do. I need to. I'm not gonna not gonna embarrass myself. That I need to. But yeah, a bit of all, no, no, that I need to. Um, because I speak in very clear Muttersprache, and I can understand. Vielen Dank, das ist sehr nett von dir. Vielen Dank. Vielen Dank. Moi aussi, j'adore le Swahili. Ah, c'est cool. Ah, c'est super quand même. Discussion idea, linguistic triangulations, e.g. an English speaker learning French, uh, U, German U, uh, through lip rounding, Mandarin tones, through intonation of question, surprise, firmness. Yes, very nice. Yeah, in fact, that does help when you can do, U, make the U sound in French, it's the same kind of sound in German, absolutely. Yeah, cool. And the tones, yes, definitely, Focusing on the similarities between the languages we speak is, is a big help. Okay, I am going to stop <laughs> because we're at one hour, 40 minutes. And um, even though I could probably stick and stay for longer because I just enjoy um, this, um, I think I'm going to get comments that people hate me making these very long videos on YouTube, particularly. Um, and also I hope that I'll be, oh, next week I won't be around, um, potentially I'm going to be on the road. I'm going to Expo Lingua in Germany, in Berlin. So if anyone's in Berlin, let me know. Um, and then I'm going to have an evening in, in, in Poland, uh, before I fly off towards Iceland. Um, and that evening, I, I actually, um, I'm going to be a little bit selfish and say, I want to make time for some of my friends in person in Poland that I've not seen for many years. One of them, one of whom is Michał Grzkowiak, who I made a video with many, many years ago when I was living in Poland, in Poznan and learning Polish. And so I'm going to, I'm going to be doing that. So I will not be around next Sunday for that reason, but I will be around the Sunday after all being well, my connection being well, I imagine it will be okay. And I will speak to you from Reykjavik in Iceland in two weeks' time. In the meantime, have a wonderful, wonderful couple of weeks of language learning. Uh, keep in touch. Remember to reach out to me if you've got any specific questions. You're very welcome to join me on Patreon. You're very welcome to yeah, reach out to me on any of the other social media platforms i'll do my best to answer whatever i can if i see questions i often try and answer them in these uh, lives because that's the easiest way for me to do it in terms of otherwise i would i would <laughs> i would end up working uh, all 100 percent of my time doing no language learning and also probably on the street because i'm not earning any money but <laughs> but otherwise i will um i will i will be back in two weeks time to speak to you all and i look forward to that very very much Thank you all so, so much for joining me. I appreciate that you taking the time to join me, for listening to me, for supporting me. And um, I look forward to speaking to you all in two weeks. Take care. Bless, bless.
Schaumst Ausländer.